Can America be brought back to a more Bible-based country? Could the approval of same-sex marriage be reversed? Could the slaughter of innocent babies in the womb be stopped? What would it take for America to recover its morality? We'll talk about it on today's edition of End of the Age. You're listening to an End of the Age Encore presentation. I have a brand new conference I want to tell you about before we get into our program today. I will be in Oxford, Mississippi one week from today. That's on March the 28th, or March the 18th, pardon me. I will be speaking on America's God-given destiny. This is a lesson that every person on earth, especially every American, needs to hear. It will be on Monday evening, March the 18th, 7 p.m. at the David H. Nutt Auditorium, 542 University Avenue in Oxford, Mississippi. So all of you over in that area plan to be with us. It's going to be a great rally, a great conference. And we'll be talking about some things that are absolutely vital and essential to all of us. Just wanted to let you know, I've got some other conferences I'll mention later, but we won't take time right now. Now, I want to talk to you for a little bit about morality. The mighty Roman Empire was not defeated from without. It decayed from within. Does a nation in moral decline ever recover? Now, that's a really important question. Many people think the answer is no. However, I've thought of some examples where a nation does recover. Remember the Bible when it says, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will forgive their sins. I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. So obviously, spiritual recovery is possible. We have many examples in Israel when Israel had gone into severe moral declension, but then God would raise up a mighty ruler to lead them, to lead them back to God and to lead them back to a biblically based morality. When the revolution was sweeping through Europe back in the days of the French Revolution, the societal conditions just seemed to be so right that every nation was being affected by these horrible revolutions, and everybody thought it was coming to England. However, the Wesley brothers, first of all, came to England, began to preach, and God swept England with a mighty revival. And all the societal conditions that seemed to be preparing the way for this revolution melted away. It never happened. Now, The reason I'm talking about this, of course, is I'd love to see it here in the United States of America. I've seen some things over the last eight or 10 years I never thought I would see. I'll never forget when I heard President Obama speak before the annual conference of the uh, GLBT, and he said to them there, you will see a time when marriage between a man and a man or a woman and a woman will be just as normal and just as accepted as marriage between a man and a woman. And I heard that and I thought, that'll never happen. But I got shocked. It did happen. Our Supreme Court ruled that marriage between two men, two women was legitimate and banning it was unconstitutional. Stunning. First time in the history of the human race such a thing has happened. And in the United States of America, in God we trust, America couldn't believe that our Supreme Court officially put the stamp of law on sodomy, the sin that caused God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the icing on the cake 
was that evening when I saw pictures of our White House lit up in the rainbow colors of the gay community, celebrating the conversion of America to a sodomite country. I was incredulous, couldn't believe it. But I'm asking today, could we get back? I hope that you'll sincerely listen for a while because I believe we can get back. And I even see signs that perhaps it's happening right now. Now, I just quickly downloaded an article. I didn't have time to, to put it up, but let me just take uh, just a moment. This article came from Life News on the 8th of this month. It's entitled, House Democrats Block Bill to Stop Intifacide, Intifacide for the 14th time refuse care for aborted babies born alive. Now, this to me was beyond the pale. I mean, I know there's a huge debate in this nation between uh, those who favor abortion and those who are against abortion. But beyond this, this law was, what if a baby, if the abortion doesn't work and the baby's born alive, do you kill the baby or do you just neglect it and let it lay there until it dies? This law was supposed to mandate that the baby had to be cared for. But this legislator voted it down. They voted to let the baby die. We've seen Bible prophecy fulfilled like never before. From the halls of the United Nations to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, End Time Ministries continues to reveal the Bible prophecy in the news headlines around the world every day. Whether it's through our broadcast or online at our Jerusalem Prophecy College, your gifts enable us to put vital materials in the hands of those who need it most. Because of you, we continue to replace fear with faith in the hearts of Christians around the world we will continue to see prophecy come to pass at an even swifter pace. We need your support. Your donation of any amount enables us to continue to broadcast and be a voice in the ever-growing censored media. To become a partner or give a one-time gift, visit endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME right now. That's 800-363-8463. Go online now. Visit endtime.com. Have you had a longing to visit the cities where Jesus healed, ministered, and taught every day? Judy and I would like to invite you to travel to the wonderful land of Israel. Experience the Word of God in vivid color while walking down the roads of the Holy Land with us. When you are ready to experience Israel, we recommend you travel with End Time Ministries. You will not only experience historical and present day Israel, you will also learn about the prophesied future to come. It's as if we traveled back in time to visit a different era and discovered ourselves in an ancient time. The tour is very well organized, the accommodations are first class, and the food is delicious. If you have ever had a desire to visit Israel, there is no better time than now. Anne from Colorado. To sign up to receive your Experience Israel 2019 packet, call Adrian or Jana at 1 800 End Time or go to endtime.com. We can't wait to experience Israel with you. You're listening to an End of the Age Encore presentation. Speaking of visiting Israel, a lot of times people ask, is it safe? All I can tell you is, Israel set a record last year for travelers coming in to visit, over 4 million. And of course, there was not one fatality. I've been going for many years now. And over the last 30 years or so, there have been at least 50 million travelers visit Israel. Not one on an organized tour has ever been killed or suffered harm. So yes, it's absolutely safe. It's as safe as right here in the United States of America. Don't let the reports, isolated reports of some conflict between Jews and Arabs, uh, don't let that detour you. That has nothing to do with the tourist industry. You will love it. It is wonderful. If you have a chance to go to Hawaii 10 times or Israel once, choose Israel. I promise you. You will never be sorry. Well, I want to get back to my subject because it's only been 
three days since Senate Democrats voted to block a bill to stop infanticide. Now, this is the 16th time congressional Democrats thwarted an attempt by Republicans to vote on a bill that would provide medical care and treatment for babies who survived failed abortions. That's all they wanted to do was to pass a bill that a born baby had to be cared for. But it was blocked by the Democrats. Now, please put aside Democrats versus Republicans for a little bit. I want to talk to you as one human being to another. Can you believe that 40-some senators in our U.S. Senate blocked a bill to protect a little baby that's now been born? Yes, they tried to abort it. It didn't work. The baby was born anyway. And now here it lays, screaming on a table. What do you do? Do you care for it? Well, all human decency, I don't care what party you're from or not from. Anybody with a heart says, Yes. I mean, should we put a, put a plastic bag over its head, head and suffocate it and kill it? Well, we all know that's murder. But yet, something has happened in our hearts and our values. We've got to get back. Well, there are some signals that we are getting back. This article I want to take you to now says GOP state lawmakers approve heartbeat abortion bans. This comes from Mail.com just a couple of days ago. Amid tears, gasps, and handshakes, a Georgia House committee has approved legislation that would outlaw abortion after a heartbeat can be detected. Now, stop just a moment and think. So the baby now is far enough along that its little heart is now beating. In Georgia, they're saying, we can't kill that baby. It has a beating heart. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. During a tense debate in Atlanta on Thursday, several Democratic lawmakers opposed to the bill turned their backs to its author, Republican Representative Ed Sedzler. Earlier in the day, some Democratic lawmakers brought in wire coat hangers in reference to unsafe home abortions. Setzler said his bill seeks to recognize that the child in the womb that is living distinct from their mother has a right to life that is worthy of legal protection. I know our granddaughter just had a baby within the last couple of weeks. What a miracle. As I held that little child and looked at its perfectly formed fingers and eyes and mouth and toes, I was just marveled at the miracle of life. You know, how does God take a seed and an egg and suddenly produce this incredible miracle? Well, anyway... The Tennessee House passed similar legislation earlier Thursday after its Republican supermajority forced an end to debate without letting some Democrats speak. Several other states, including Mississippi, Florida, Kentucky, Ohio, and South Carolina, are also considering this type of legislation. Abortion opponents across the country are hopeful the U.S. Supreme Court, with New justices, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, will either reverse Woe versus Wade or uphold specific state laws that could undermine the court's 1973 ruling establishing the right of women to abort a fetus that can't survive outside the womb. I know this is a passionate topic, but where's our humanity? I know in the Bible... There were times that Israel got so far from God, they would actually make their children pass through the fire and offer them up as a burnt sacrifice to heathen gods. How do you get there? 
Well, let me tell you, when we have a majority in our Senate voting to not care for a baby that's now been born and is laying there living, we're not very far from that kind of heathenism, are we? We need to recover our humanity and our God-fearing status. Well, here's another report. This article is entitled, Government Bus Company Changes Course, Allows Pro-Life Ad with Photos of Unborn Baby. This comes from the Christian Post just three days or so ago. An Indiana-based pro-life group will now be allowed to run an ad on the sides of buses featuring two images of human fetuses after being initially rejected by a public transportation system. The Greater Lafayette Public Transportation Corporation, also called City Bus, recently agreed to allow an ad from Tippecanoe County Right to Life less than a year after the pro-life group filed a lawsuit against them. Right to Life's ad features photos of three babies, two in the womb and one newborn. The first photo, a sonogram image, has the caption, me. The second, much further along in the womb, says, me again. While the newborn photo says, still me. Now, if that doesn't pull on your heart springs, heart strings, what can? God help us. So what I'm saying is, is there a return to morality or not? Now, there's some reason for me to believe that there is. For example, of this last year, the Trump administration chose not to declare June GLBT month. That had been done under the Obama administration each year. And the government put its full weight behind celebrating gays, lesbians, bisexual, and transgender, all things forbidden by God in the Bible. Hear me again. All things forbidden by God in the Bible. And yet our government brazenly put taxpayer dollars behind it, put the stamp of the government's approval on it. Well, the Trump administration declined to do that. They didn't make a lot of noise about it. Furthermore, now then, the courts have ruled that transgenders can be banned from the service because it's very confusing. If someone born a woman comes in and wants to live in the men's dormitory, or someone born a man wants to come in and live in the women's dormitory, what kind of confusion is that? How do you de deal with that? So now the courts have said, no, the military doesn't have to take them. Now, under the previous administration, they had ruled that they had to be accepted. Now, the Trump administration is not kicking the transgenders already in and out, and I don't know how many of them are, there are, probably not too many. But in attempting to handle this in a compassionate way, they're not kicking them out but they're not taking any more in. So are we recovering some here? Is America making a turnaround? There's many other instances I could tell you about. I won't take time to do it today, but I just am saying to all of us, whether you're Republican or Democrat or independent, we really need to recover morality here in the United States of America. And it feels like God is moving us in that direction. Let's let it happen. I'm not talking about being hateful. I know I read Abraham Lincoln's book with malice toward none. That was a, a greatly edifying read. And we don't want to be filled with hatred or malice. Let me stop right here to say this. You know, there's a big debate these days over hate speech. Now, as a pastor, I teach people you should not hate anybody and you should not be hateful. But at the same time, here in America, we cherish freedom of speech. You cannot have laws against hate speech and still have freedom of speech. It's impossible. Now, I'm against hate speech, but I do not believe there should be a law against it. I so cherish freedom of speech 
and let's say hate crimes. A murder caused by hate is no worse than a murder caused by momentary passion. It's the same thing. Because if I say I love you and pull the trigger, I'm just as guilty as murder as if I say I hate you and pull the trigger. We are trying to socially engineer and get inside people's hearts and minds. And that's not something that we need to do. We, as a, you know, Christianity would fix most of this. If you had true Christians, you would have no hatred. You would have no murder. There are many things you would not have and we wouldn't have to debate with all these things. And there was a time in America when our morality was so accepted and we were so predominantly, predominantly Christian that many of these things were just assumed and taken for granted. However, over the last many years, things have taken a sharp turn downward toward immorality. Somehow, we've got to get back to Bible-based morality. You say, well, wait a minute. Why Bible-based? Because if you don't have the Bible, you have no basis for morality. This nation was built on the Bible. One of the first things that our Congress did when it was first formed back at the beginning of our nation, they passed a bill to put Bibles in every one of the schools. They said, without studying the Bible, that you can't even call it education. Boy, that's strange in this day when we've now done a 180 degree turn and say you cannot stay the Bible in our schools? Well, when prayer was banned from our school, it was about the same year that homosexuality was ruled legal in this nation. Now, am I for the criminalization of homosexuality? I don't believe I would be for that. I don't think you can legislate morality. I think... We've got to see a spiritual renaissance, a spiritual revival in this nation. Okay, well, let me talk to you about something else. We're shifting subjects now. But all of you know we talk a lot about the uh, peace plan that's coming in the Middle East. We've talked about the prophecy that says when they sign this peace agreement, which would create a Palestinian state and would put the Temple Mount under a sharing arrangement. Both of those things explicitly prophesied in the Bible. When they sign that agreement, that will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon. Most of you know by now that President Trump has a deal. He calls it the deal of the century. He has put together a, an extensive, comprehensive plan for peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Well, he's getting ready to put that plan on the table about 30 days from right now. However, Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the Palestinians, is so hateful toward Trump because he recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. He said, I want nothing to do with Donald Trump nor the American government and their proposals. Consequently, Vladimir Putin, the head of Russia, has stepped up to try to become a peace broker. This report says that Putin now has proposed a Netanyahu-Abbas summit. Uh, this was reported just on the 4th of March, just last week. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Russian President Vladimir Putin proposed to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during their meeting in Moscow last week to organize a summit in Russia between Netanyahu and Palestinian Authority Chairman Mahmoud Abbas to renew talks with no preconditions. This is according to a report on Channel 13 television in Israel. Okay, now let's pause a moment. So Abbas says, we will not go to peace talks where only America is the arbiter. However, let's just say that Trump and Putin would agree to co-host peace talks. Could that then be the key that would bring this all together? Now, Putin talked to Netanyahu, the head of Israel. I wonder if Netanyahu would ever suggest this to President Trump because everybody's talking about Trump's deal of the century. He has been selling it for two years. Now it's done. Now it's ready to go. So that's where we are. Now, 
Putin said that his country believes that it is an important step to building trust between the two parties for them to meet without precondition. After Putin's warning, Russian TV list nuclear targets in the U.S. Now, that's something else I want to talk to you about in just a moment. Uh, before we go there, though, we'll get that in our next segment. But right now, let me say to all of you, this peace agreement is coming. When this peace deal is signed, whether it's this, yet this year or next year, I cannot tell you. I can just tell you we're getting very, very close. When that's signed, the final seven years to Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus will begin. We're getting ready to see that happen. So what do we do about it? End Time Ministries has a course called the Jerusalem Prophecy College. You can enroll. Anybody in the world can enroll. It's totally online. It's totally automated. It will equip you to know all about this prophecy and furthermore, what you should do about it. I think every person in the world should enroll in the Jerusalem Prophecy College right now, and many are. It's growing by leaps and bounds. We've gone from 200 students to 2,800 students in the last 13 months. So get on board. Simply go to JerusalemProphecyCollege.com. That's, once again, JerusalemProphecyCollege.com. It will bring up a registration page. Register enroll in your first course. It's a total of 11 semesters, a total of 143 lessons. There's a quiz after every lesson. You watch the DVD, you listen to the lesson, you take the quiz, you submit it. If you pass, you go to the next lesson. You will be preparing so that you can know exactly what you should do in these times just ahead. I urge you, maybe you've been planning on it, but you've been neglectful. Don't neglect one day more. Go to JerusalemProphecyCollege.com, register, and enroll. Now, there's a small $59 administration fee to help us to keep it open. It's so small, it's almost not worth mentioning. We'll be back in just a moment. Move Mountains with Irvin Baxter. This book by Irvin's grandson provides 30 days of devotion that will enhance your relationship with God and others. Authentic illustrations from early morning devotions at end time will help you find your purpose and eliminate fears. Commit to taking this 30-day journey and experience real life change. Get your book for only $14.99. Call 1-800-363-8463 or go to endtime.com slash move. If ever people needed to hear the unvarnished truth, it is now. There are some subjects that are not politically correct to talk about, but they're urgent. That's why I'm grateful for End Time Magazine. If you're not a subscriber, you're missing information that will impact your life. End Time has a bi-monthly magazine that explains how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. You can get a two-year subscription for only $29. You can also get a bulk subscription and pass them out to your church. We have gotten reports that End Time Magazine has caused spiritual awakenings in churches when they see the prophecies being fulfilled right now. You can start your own ministry and lead them in doctor's offices, libraries, laundry mats. You never know if you might be responsible for saving someone who is searching for the unvarnished truth. That's what the magazine has done in many lives. Call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. And get your subscription today. If your station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com and click the watch button to continue today's broadcast. You can also finish up later by clicking the archive button. You're listening to an End of the Age Encore presentation. I want to mention once again our Prophecy Conference in Oxford, Mississippi, one week from today. On March the 18th, I will be there. This is the first time I've mentioned it here, so let me tell you again. It's going to be at 7 p.m. at the David H. Nutt Auditorium, 542 University Avenue in Oxford, Mississippi. It's going to be a great night. I'm going to be speaking on the United States in the Bible and what is our destiny. I'm going to prove to you that the United States is specifically prophesied in your Bible. But not only is it prophesied, what will happen to the United States? Will we be a part of the kingdom of the Antichrist? Will the mark of the beast ever come to America? 
and what will happen concerning America and Israel. All those questions will be answered. I would really advise you to be at that conference. Once again, it's Oxford, Mississippi. And then also, let me remind you of the Hear the Watchman conference right here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, to learn more about that, simply go to hearthewatchman.com. And when you sign up, use the promotional code in times 20. Then another very important conference, I will be speaking at all these conferences, the Age of Deception Conference. This one is in Hickory, North Carolina. To register for that conference, go to thevoiceofevangelism.com. That'll be April the 4th through the 7th. So we're going to be all over the place. We're going to be in Dallas, Hickory, North Carolina. We're going to be in Oxford, Mississippi. I'm sure you can make it out to one or more of those conferences. Love to have you at those conferences. Okay, let's get back now because there's another very sobering thing. Some people say, well, what's it going to take to get this peace negotiation off of the middle and off the bubble and get real progress? Well, I don't know the answer to that for sure. However, I do know there's another major event prophesied in the Bible. There's a, a war coming that's going to be the greatest war the world has ever known. The Bible says one third of mankind will be killed. Now, what kind of war will that be? It's got to be nuclear. I'm, when one third of mankind, there's 7.5 billion people in this world. That means 2.5 billion would be killed. To compare that to 52 million killed in World War II, which was horrible. Now multiply that by 40 times. Your Bible specifically prophesies that war is coming and it's going to come in the very near future. If you want to read about it later, you can read about it in Revelation chapter number 9, verse 13 through 21. But we know that in order for a war to kill this massive amount of people, it will have to be nuclear. A couple of articles caught my attention within the last couple of days. This article says, after Putin's warning, Russian TV list nuclear targets in the United States. This comes from Reuters uh, just a few days ago. Russian state television has listed U.S. military facilities that Moscow would target in the event of a nuclear strike and said that a hypersonic missile Russia is developing would be able to hit them in less than five minutes. The targets included the Pentagon and the presidential retreat in Camp David, Maryland. The report, unusual even by the sometimes bellicose standards of Russian state TV, was broadcast on Sunday evening days after President Vladimir Putin said Moscow was militarily ready for a Cuban so uh, missile-style crisis if the United States wanted one. With tensions rising over Russian fears that the United States might deploy intermediate-range nuclear missiles in Europe as a Cold War-era arms control treaty unravels, Putin has said Russia would be forced to respond by placing hypersonic nuclear missiles on submarines near U.S. waters. Very sobering, but that's not all. This article, U.S. gets beat in World War III simulation. This comes from Zero Hedge just today. In simulated World War III scenarios, the U.S. continues to lose against Russia and China. Two top war planners warned last week in our games when we fight Russia and China. Blue, that's the United States, gets defeated. RAND analyst David Okmanek said Thursday, RAND's war games show how U.S. armed forces colored blue on war game maps experienced the most substantial losses in one scenario after another and still can't thwart Russia or China, which predictably is red, as in red China. From accomplishing their objectives, annihilating Western forces. The article said, we lose a lot of people. We lose a lot of equipment. 
we usually fail to achieve our objective of preventing aggression by the adversary, he warned. In the next military conflict, which some believe may come as soon as the mid-2020s, all five battlefield domains, land, sea, air, space, and cyberspace, will be heavily contested, suggesting the U.S. could have a difficult time in achieving superiority as it has in prior conflicts. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to frighten you, but these are real articles appearing in the media right now. These things could well happen. And there is this huge war prophesied. Now, we've never had a major war on our territories. We've always fought over in the European theater. However, our enemies now have weapons that can virtually reach every city in the United States of America. Should we humble ourselves and pray? We certainly should. And President Trump understands these dangers very well. We have a record $700 billion allocated for military this past year. The next year, $715 billion. He says, we've got to rebuild. Our military is so decimated. It's been in decline over the last eight years. We've got to build it back. He sees the dangers himself. Our president does. It is sobering to say the least. Well, hate to hit you with such dire messages, but I feel like I have to talk to you because if we had a war that killed one third of mankind, would that push the different powers of the world to insist on a peace agreement in the Middle East? I mean, when we wake up to 2.5 billion people being buried by bulldozers in mass graves, would that produce an outcry for peace like you've never heard before? I think it would. Now, I wish this wouldn't happen, but I can't wish it away. It's in the prophecies of the Bible. The prophecies always come to pass. And let me say, the, you say, you're scaring me. Well, the first thing we all need to do is get right with God. Because if you have eternal life, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So it takes the fear. The Bible teaches us that there should be no fear in death to those of us who are born again and ready to meet our maker. So make sure that you're in that kind of a position. If you're not, I would urge you to go on your website, go to endtime.com. I've written a little brochure there called, What Do You Mean Born Again? Jesus said, except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. In other words, that's what it takes to be saved. Being born again is the plan of salvation authored by Jesus Christ when he came to this earth 2,000 years ago. He wants every single person listening to me today, he wants you to be born again. And let me tell you, if your life's not going right, the only answer is be born again. Everything will change dramatically. The Bible says the things I used to love, I now hate. The things I used to hate, I now love. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away, all things become new. Go to endtime.com and read the article. Uh, what do you mean born again? And then if you still have questions, if you don't fully understand, pick up the phone and call us here at 800 End Time. Speak to one of our ministers. They'll talk to you about the details concerning being born again. Well, we're getting to the phones now, so we're going out to California. First of all, Seth is calling from California. Hello, Seth. Hi, Irvin. How you doing? I'm doing just hey. fine. Thank you. Uh, regarding your topic there, about a week or so ago, I came across an article about a Russian general and a USA, a U.S. general meeting in I can't remember who was, I was trying to find it just now because I called it the last second. But they were, the Russians and the U.S. were meeting together in Europe. What they're discussing, I have no idea. But my thought was that Russia and U.S. are going to take China out. And that's based upon all the years I've been listening to you about China 
and because the U.S. and Russia have to be here at the end, that means. So yeah, I just somebody needs to Google it and find it. I I'm trying to do it now. Yeah. Uh, well, well, Seth. That's, what, that's kind of my question. Seth. You never know what's being done secretly behind closed doors. We know that Russia and the United States have fought on the same side in World War I and World War II. So traditionally, we have been allies in the two world wars. Uh, but what will happen, we know that China and Russia are traditionally communist nations. And communism is still bent on ruling the world. China intends to dominate the world. But what side is Russia really on? What side is the United States really on? That's something that most of us don't know. Only in the highest halls of power would perhaps some of those things be disclosed. If Russia and the United States did join together, since they control 90% of the world's nuclear weapons, nobody could stand before a force like that. We do know that this war will kill 2.75 uh, or 2.5 billion people. Nuclear weapons could easily do that. The entire nation of China could be wiped off the map. That would be 1.3 billion. That would leave another 1.2 billion to die. And again, we don't discuss these things lightly. They're so sobering. And it just is unthinkable. But yet the Bible prophesies this is coming and so uh, whenever it comes, as far as the timing goes, we know that this war has to happen before the final three and a half years. Let's just say that there would be a peace deal signed between the Palestinians and the Israelis yet in 2019. Then we would enter a three and a half year window when according to the prophecy, this war would have to take place. However, it could happen before the signing of the peace agreement. We don't know for sure how close we are to that agreement. Maybe it's a year or two or three. We don't know. So we live in a window here of about six years or so that in my mind is incredibly dangerous. So what can we do about it? The first thing is take care of our eternal salvation because this life is here and then it's gone. This life is but a vapor. It's just a moment. It's like living for two minutes, preparing for eternity. So the most important thing in any of our lives is preparing for our eternity. Your eternal salvation is more important than your business, your car, your family, your house. You must be born again. Many Christians admit end time Bible prophecy is very complex and difficult to understand and for some a little bit scary. But what if you could understand Bible prophecy? What if you could know what will happen and how the United States will play a key role during end time events? When you call today and get Understanding the End Time DVD Curriculum, you can have peace about what is to come while understanding the prophetic events that appear in our headlines every day. When you call or go online to endtime.com and order, you'll learn the answer to the biggest prophecy question of all. Will the rapture take place and when will it happen? This 14-part DVD series is the definitive End Time Prophecy Bible study available. And for this limited time, you can get it for just $149. Don't miss this special offer. Understanding the End Time. Call now. 1-800-363-8463. That's 1-800-END-TIME. Or go to endtime.com today. You're listening to an End of the Age Encore presentation. If you'd like to be on the air with us, we do have open phones today. So now is your time. The number to call, 877-END-TIME, 877-363-8463. Now we're going to North Carolina. Barry's calling. Hi, Barry. Barry, are you with me? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, what's on your mind? Hey, my question is CERN and the End Time. Have you seen any YouTube videos with CERN? I am slightly familiar with it. I am not in, in depth familiar with it. I do know that it's one of the foremost nuclear facilities in the world. It's European based. And I believe 
that CERN is probably the one that's done the uh, big collider. They have a collider that actually straddles a border and they have been trying to uh, find the uh, source that holds the nucleus together. You know, that's, that's always been a big question in science because all atoms are made up of a nucleus of protons and neutrons and then electrons go around the outside and nobody can explain what holds the nucleus together because normally like charges repel. But right. in the case of the atom, the protons stay together. And th finally the scientists have decided to call it the God factor. And that's really what it is because the Bible says that all of the worlds are held in store by the power of his word. But they have been uh, using this and I don't recall the name of the collider. I, I may recall it in just a moment. But they have been trying to find the God factor. But many people were so frightened that if they ever was able to split the nucleus, that it would set up a chain reaction that would blow up the entire world. There were actually demonstrators asking them not to do it. That's what little oh, bit yeah, I know. Yeah, they already have. They already have. Uh, they're uh, experimenting with black holes and stuff like that. So, but I was listening to a YouTube video, but they got this they spirit on Saturn. They're trying to link up with the CERN, and it's it's really high tech stuff. And I like wow. Yeah, well, I, really I know concerning. enough about it just to be dangerous, but uh, nevertheless, that is what I know about it. Yeah. And probably yeah, I would definitely check it out. I would definitely uh, just uh, maybe listen to a couple of YouTube videos. It's really high tech stuff, quantum theory, and it's it's, it's past me. So right. But it's definitely worth checking out. Just to, you know, do a little research. And they said one of the keys is uh, one of the CERN could possibly open up the boundless pit. I was like, wow. I mean. Yeah, well, uh, there's a lot of speculation. A lot of uh, it's just speculation until we get there. But Yeah, and the one thing about it, Barry, is that uh, this nuclear facility, this one of the highest in the world, is in Europe. And since the Antichrist is coming out of Europe, that could be highly uh, important as well. I appreciate it, Barry. We'll have to look in more into that. Thank you for your phone call. Uh, let's go now to uh, Phil out in Illinois. Hello, Phil. Brother Baxter, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. I got a question for you. Uh, the last time I spoke to you, I mentioned about Pakistan and India. But the thing I wanted to ask is this. Because they do have intermediate nuclear weapons, could possibly uh, Putin or China or even President Un maybe help get something going between Pakistan and India that would thus bring us into a war? Well, you know, traditionally, it's more normally the smaller countries that bring the superpowers into confrontation. And that's what's so incredibly dangerous. Of course, India is not a small country. It has 1.3 billion people. So it's four times the United States of America, but not, doesn't nearly have the military power that we have. My understanding is that India, for every missile that Pakistan has, has India has 20. So right now, India appears to be much stronger militarily than Pakistan. But there's always the danger that when these little firefights start out there between lesser nations, that it could bring the bigger powers into confrontation. That's the thing we really have to be concerned about. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you, Phil. Appreciate it so much. Uh, sure. Let's go now. Let's go to Jacob calling from Michigan. Hello, Jacob. Hey, brother. I appreciate your show and your time and everything. I said a quick question, something that's been on my mind. I wasn't quite sure about. Uh, I just read another day in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, and Jesus was talking to his disciples. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Uh, and then I wonder, is that the same event in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, where it says the dragon was banished from heaven? I'm and not absolutely it, positive, it, Jacob, but I tend to believe it is. I believe when Jesus said that to them, he was looking into the future. Uh, Jesus okay. had the ability to look into the past. You know, he said before Abraham's day was, I am. 
He also has the ability to look into the future. Uh, he prophesied many events in the future. And he said, I saw Satan falling uh, like lightning from heaven. And then when you get to uh, Revelation chapter number 12, three and a half years before the battle of Armageddon, uh, you have a war in heaven and Satan is going to be cast out of heaven and banished from heaven and confined to the earth. So I do believe it's probably the same incident. Thank you, brother. And one quick question, follow-up question. That, that heavenly war, is that, is that, um, has that been ongoing or is it something that is going to happen at a particular time and, and then, um, then we'll know because the, uh, the prophetic three and a half years? Yeah, we'll it's going to happen happened. at a particular time. It's not ongoing. Okay. Now, obviously, there's always a struggle between light and darkness, but there in Re Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7, it says that Satan and his angels made war against God and his angels, and Michael led the angels of heaven against Satan, defeated them, and this brings about a huge change in the world in that Satan has been the accuser of the brethren since the beginning of the human race, but he will no longer be the accuser of the brethren. He will no longer be able to appear before God for the final three and a half years. The Bible says, uh, glory and honor be to him that sits on the throne for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which did accuse them before our God day and night. But then it says, but they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. We, even though right now Satan is our accuser, yet we overcome him when he tries to impose guilt upon us we overcome him because the blood of the lamb is able to eradicate anything that Satan could impose upon our lives. So we overcome him by the blood of the lamb. That's our defensive weapon and the word of our testimony, which is our offensive weapon. We can tell others about what God has done for us and that will open the door for them to also enjoy this great salvation. But uh, yeah, I do believe that this is a one-time event which will happen three and a half years before Armageddon. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate the phone call. Uh, let's go now to <clears throat> Ronald calling from Tennessee. Hello, Ronald. Hi. Hey, uh, Mr. Baxter. This is uh, Ronald in Memphis, and I uh, enjoy watching your program on YouTube. Thank you. So, uh, the question I have is, in Daniel, uh, it mentions, you know, that the king had astrologers, soothsayers, and magicians as part of his court. And what I'm asking is, the magicians uh, at that time, are they the same as we uh, think like now? You know, nowadays uh, the magicians are entertainers, uh, people that do sleight of hand. Anyway, that's my question. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you, Ronald. I'm not sure I can answer you for positive. Here's what we do know. We know that in Moses' day, he went before Pharaoh and he threw his rod down and it became a serpent. Pharaoh's magicians were able to do the same thing. However, Moses' serpent then ate up the serpents that the uh, magicians turned their rods into, and they were left there with nothing. When Moses' rod turned back, uh, serpent turned back into a rod, uh, they stood there barehanded. We know that the devil has power. The Bible teaches that the false prophet will perform miracles, even to pull, pull down fire from heaven. So we know there are demonic powers. I would say to all of you, don't ever get involved with them. For instance, communication with the dead. Don't ever go there. Don't read books about it. Because in so doing, you open yourself up to those spirits. But we do know in the Bible that uh, there were many women with familiar spirits. They communicated with the dead. Saul even went to one of them uh, the day before he died. So we know that there are some dark forces out there. The devil has power. God's power is greater. So I cannot tell you what every single thing represents. All I can tell you is I would never go to a fortune teller. I would never go to an hypnotist. I would stay away from those kinds of things because all the supernatural that we need is in Jesus Christ. And you go to the dark side, you never know. You may never come out again. Let's go now to Alabama. Harry's calling from Alabama. Hello, Harry. Hi, uh, Pastor Irvin. Yes. 
are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. I was wondering, do you ever come out to uh, the Alabama area? or? Yes, I have before. I, I'm not sure I'm scheduled right now, but I do come out there occasionally. Well, um, uh, my, uh, I just joined the Jerusalem Prophecy uh, University, and I, I love it. I just great. I I just love it. But but my question is, you know, um, I've already gotten uh, you know about halfway through the first course, and it says uh, that that basically the uh, U.S. is uh, is not involved with with the mark of the beast. So should we not worry about that? At all, or or what? Yeah, Harry. You know, it's only been a couple of years that all this is really solidified in my mind. I a- asked myself the question for a while: uh, when all the beasts of Daniel seven merge into one beast in Revelation thirteen, depicting the government of the Antichrist, I was questioning. The eagle's wings weren't brought over. All the other, the lion, the bear, the leopard, the ten horns, they were all brought over from the four separate beasts of Daniel 7. But when they merge into one, the only thing that was not brought over was the eagle's wings. The eagle's wings were in Daniel 7, not in Revelation 13. So I wrestled for quite a long time. Well, what's happened to the United States of America? However, it came to me so clearly one day, back up one chapter from chapter 13, where there's no eagle's wings, go to chapter 12, and there you see a woman with 12 stars around her head. That's a symbol of Israel, the 12 stars of the 12 tribes of Israel. And three and a half years before the battle of Armageddon, the Bible says that Satan, when he's cast out of heaven, will come down to persecute the woman. But there will be given to the woman, this is Revelation 12, 14, there will be given to the woman two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into her place where she's nourished from the face of the serpent, Satan, for three and a half years. So that depicts the United States defending Israel against the world government of the Antichrist. So obviously, if we are opposing the Antichrist, we're not going to be pledging allegiance to the Antichrist. So on the strength of all that, I have come to believe that the United States of America is not going to be affected by the mark of the beast, but most of the world will be. Hopefully will be a place of safety and a place of evangelism. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you very much for your phone calls. And I just want to say to you again, we're getting glowing reports. Everybody that belongs to Jerusalem Prophecy College, they call us. They say it's wonderful. We enjoy it so much. We think you'll say the same thing. So go to JerusalemProphecyCollege.com, get on board, let's do it together. This has been End of the Age, brought to you by the faithful partners of End Time Ministries. If you're not currently a partner with End Time Ministries, or if you would like more information, we invite you to call us at 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 or visit us online at endtime.com.